Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for uh, sharing your lunch hour with me. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some exciting stuff out of this, uh, and I will, won't bore you to sleep, and you won't have to have an afternoon nap. So uh, I'm Chris Piercy uh, with Horner Express Backyard Expo, and we specialize in everything that's not a swimming pool. So outdoor kitchens, fire features, patio shade structures, uh, decking materials, and some uh, hopefully some exciting new stuff that we're going to talk about today. So without further ado, I'm just going to start my little uh, presentation and we'll see how it goes. And I guess some housekeeping things, um, if you would, uh, I'm sure we'll have some um, time at the end to uh, ask questions. So you can just use the chat or the, uh, yeah, the chat uh, box there to type in your questions. Um, and uh, Lewis will read them to us uh, and I'll try to answer them the best that, that I can. So let's see how this goes. That. Do this. All right, so I think you can see my screen now. I'm assuming that you can. Uh, so who's ready to sell outdoor living and why would you want to? Is anyone out there seeing a lot more people coming through the doors this year than last year? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, the chat is disabled. Oh, well, just this, this. The host has disabled the chat. Ah, well, okay, I'll take care maybe, of that. Uh, there you go. He's our man. Thanks for letting us know. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. And Bernice says no camera, no microphone. Is that you talking to me, Bernice? You're talking to yourself. No, Chris, your your camera, uh, everything is good. Okay, cool. Uh, so anyway, um, is anyone out there seeing more uh, people uh, calling on the telephone or uh, sending at least your information to your websites about, uh, you know, are you seeing more or less uh, activity this year than you did last year? Well, I think we all know the answer yes. to that. Yeah, we all know the answer to that. Definitely less. Um, and, you know, probably not going to be more for a while. Uh, you know, we all enjoyed uh, 2020 and 2021, 2022. Although at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, everyone was freaked out, right? You remember how you thought to yourself, oh, my God, what are we going to do? No one's going to, you know, leave their house. We're going to be hiding out in their closets. They're not going to spend any money. The world's coming to an end. Um, but it turned out that wasn't the case, at least for us in the pool industry. It turned out that, uh, you know, the last past couple of years were the best ever. Uh, so who would have thunk it, right? Well, um, I think we're back to the new normal now, the new reality, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, we're back to 2019 type of uh, uh, sales and production and interest uh, when we were experiencing, you know, a, a weird phenomenon. So how are we going to get, um, you know, more business and keep our businesses uh, the way that we want them to be? Um, we got to think about new things that we can do, right? So uh, we got to try to make every lead and every job count. So how do you do that? Well, number one is you uh, do a really good job in the sales process and you close the sale. Um, and then when you close the sale, you can even talk about selling bigger projects to gain more revenue. And how do you sell bigger projects? Do you just put a lot more stuff in the swimming pool? Or do you think about what else you could potentially sell this customer who has entrusted you to at least talk to them about this project? So what are some other things that you can sell them? Well, you can sell them outdoor kitchens. You can sell them some patio shade structures. You can sell them some uh, expensive and new and modern and cool uh, decking products like artificial turf and other new decking products, which we'll talk about in a while. So the, the main thing uh, uh, to this slide is to think beyond your current mindset. You got to get rid of your own head trash. And what do I mean by that? A lot of times, you know, human nature is we kind of do what we do and we get focused on what we do and we don't see outside of those blinders. So the idea here is to open up your 
mind, ex expand on what you can do, know what there is to offer, and don't be afraid to offer it. So by doing that, uh, you get to sell more larger uh, value projects and make more profit on every job. And that's the whole key here is to make more profit so you continue doing what you do. Here's one thing that you could sell to make more profit and sell more bigger jobs. That's outdoor kitchens. So the great news about outdoor kitchens is people actually want them. I know, go figure, right? Uh, last year, there was over 2 billion Google searches. It's a lot. 71 million views on TikTok with a video that had something to do with an outdoor kitchen. 500,000 Instagram hashtags, whatever that means. I think that means people are like kind of interested in learning more about outdoor kitchens. So the good news is uh, people want them. Um, according to Forbes magazine, outdoor kitchens are seeing a strong design trend in modern homes. Outdoor kitchens are currently topping the American Institute of Architectural's top, top project trend list. That was a mouthful. Uh, so this is largely due to more outdoor advancements than ever before. And since COVID, a lot more people are spending time and money at home and in their homes. An outdoor kitchen is a great addition to any outdoor space. So sell the people something that the people want. How easy is that? Well, it is real easy, but it can be kind of a major pain uh, depending on how you're actually doing the installation slash construction. This is certainly one way that you can build an outdoor kitchen, and this is using uh, concrete blocks. So basically, you're building a little building outside, um, and certainly using concrete blocks, this is a outdoor kitchen cabinet that's going to last forever. Um, however, it is definitely a major construction project. There's some specialty trades and some permitting involved. It can be a rather lengthy and certainly a little pretty messy installation and construction project. Um, the positive is that it's a relatively low cost of material because concrete blocks don't cost very much, uh, but it's a very high cost of time and labor. So most people don't do this type of construction. There's others out there. And this is the most common we call it the unreliable option. And that's kind of a, a, probably a little harsh because it can be, a, it can work just fine if your contractor, this guy here, uh, is a good dude. And if he's a good dude, he does good work and he shows up, uh, you know, and uh, with a clear head and clear mind uh, all the time, it can work out really, really well. But the challenge can be if there's ever an issue, um, and the homeowner has an issue with whatever. The homeowner doesn't know who this guy is. They knew who they know who they wrote the check to, which is you. And sometimes you might not even know who this guy is. So that can be a problem. So this is a construction method where we use uh, either steel or aluminum studs that you buy at the hardware store or building supply. You come out and build it on site, skin it with a uh, concrete board. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly one way of doing it. And as I said, it can be good or bad, just depending on the quality of this guy. Um, there are some, uh, companies that still make outdoor kitchen cabinetry out of wood. Uh, we don't think that's a very reliable uh, way of doing it at all. Wood outside is not great. Uh, wood around a grill, also not a great idea. So this is certainly better than wood, but we think there's a better way which is a factory built custom kitchen. So this is the most reliable option in our opinion. Um, and this is where it is a factory built custom project. So factory built means it's built at a factory. And some of the benefits to that is there's actually quality control in place. The thing is made the same way every time. Uh, the installation process is much less uh, time-wise because everything is already done. Basically, the cabinet gets sit in place and the appliances get dropped in and then some finish work is done. So at the bottom of the slide are examples of two uh, completed outdoor kitchens. And the top you can see left is uh, one a picture inside the factory coming down the production line. And then this is uh, top right is just how it shows up at the job site. 
So let's go and see a little bit more about the factory built custom kitchen. So this cabinetry is made by a company in Tampa. It's called Captiva, EKA. Um, and it is a very well built cabinetry. Uh, it's built to last. It has a sealed bottom and it has an interior floor. So when you open up the cabinet doors and you look inside the cabinet, it's going to look like your kitchen cabinet. Uh, you can actually use it for outdoor storage. You're not going to look down and see dirt or see pavers. Uh, the inside is all fit and finished. It's painted inside with an antimicrobial, anti-corrosive finish material. Um, so it's super, super nice, and it has a lifetime structural warranty. You think this, the guy we looked at before, gives you a lifetime structural warranty or any type of warranty? I think he gives a taillight warranty. As soon as you don't see his taillights anymore, you don't have any warranty. I don't know. Just saying. So here's some more pictures of the inside of the cabinet. As I said, it has a nice fit and finished interior that's painted with that antimicrobial, anti corrosive material. So I can actually use it for storage. And this is the installation process. Remember I said that the um, concrete blocks can take, uh, it's a very long installation process. The, uh, these build on site metal framing, it can be a, a couple day process. Well, the factory built cabinetry is about an hour installation process. So let's see if we can make this video work and I'll show you basically how it happens. So did everyone see that? I hope. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was involved with this particular installation and you saw that uh, the cabinet came already built from the factory. All the appliance cutouts are already done. Um, so the installation process is basically moving it from the point of drop off to the point of final uh, destination, then doing some leveling, then dropping the appliances in. This particular project, uh, the home homeowner wanted a uh, travertine tile. There's a big 24 inch by 24 inch travertine tiles and a solid granite slab. So that was done after the cabinet was in place. Uh, the installation of the cabinet and the appliances took about 45 minutes. Uh, obviously, it took a little bit longer to add the, the finishes to it, but it was a pretty quick and easy uh, installation process. So you're not lingering around the job site for multiple days. And when I say you, it's really us uh, and our with our program, you can do the installation if you'd like to, but we have subcontractors set up uh, around the state that will do the installation for you. So from the factory, you can get it with a natural stone tile countertop, or we also offer it with a solid piece of granite. If we're doing one with a solid granite countertop, um, the cabinet gets set in place and the appliances get put in, the actual countertop then gets templated by a local granite provider. Uh, the fabrication process is about a week. So the cabinet's gonna be sitting there uh, without a countertop for approximately a week. And then the uh, countertop gets installed by the local granite supplier. You can also get it with uh, acrylic texture on the cabinetry or a natural stone veneer on the outside of the cabinetry. Obviously, the pricing is a little different. Uh, the uh, veneer is more expensive than the acrylic texture. And also, the, um, the solid granite countertop is a little bit more expensive than a, than a tile countertop. Of course, we'll get into all those uh, specifics, uh, you know, when we talk to you more about pricing and such. 
basically, I'm just trying to give some broad strokes of showing you how easy this can be. So what? Who cares? I think it's my favorite one. So uh, all you pool builders out there, um, when you sell an $80,000 pool package, approximately how much profit are you making? I'll ask this question a lot and I get some varying answers, but most people say between 8 and 10 percent by the time it's all said and done. Maybe less. So I just said as a, as a broad stroke, 10 percent profit on $80,000 is $8,000, right? All you mathematicians out there got that one right away, I'm sure. $80,000. But what if something goes wrong? Never happens with swimming pool construction. Never. How much aggravation, coordination, scheduling did it take to get that $80,000? This is a big one. How much money did you extend to your subs and your suppliers, like Horner Express, uh, before the project was completed? Right? Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of money coming in, but it's a lot of money going out before the, most of the money comes in. So that can be a little bit of a cash flow challenge for your business. How long did it take to get that eighty thousand, that eight thousand dollars profit? I don't know what uh, your particular, you know, uh, business is is as far as the lead times or the project times for swimming pool construction. But if I said six weeks, sorry, if I said six months, uh, it's probably that's probably uh, a pretty fast installation for most of us. So <clears throat> what if you sold a $15,000 outdoor kitchen? Wonder what your profit would look like. Well, if you sell it at the pricing that we suggest, it's gonna be a 33% profit margin versus 10%. That's about four, almost $5,000 on a $15,000 project versus $8,000 on an $80,000 project. And with an outdoor kitchen, someone else built it because it's built at a factory. Someone else can install it. It doesn't leak and never turns green. People want it. It doesn't cave in. The rain doesn't delay it. And if you have an account with Warner Express, terms account, you can pay for it in 30 days. So you don't have to pay for it until you get paid by from your customer. Get your profit in a couple weeks versus many, many months. And I say a couple weeks only because once we uh, receive an order from you, uh, it takes about three weeks in the production a process to be for the cabinet, cabinetry to be manufactured. And then we do the installation. Um, so there you go, a smiley face or a frowny face. What if you did something crazy, like you didn't sell an $80,000 pool, you sold them a $65,000 pool, but you added a $15,000 outdoor kitchen. So it's still $80,000, right? So you still get the same gross revenue, but uh, it's a better deal for you because you get 10% on the kitchen and you get five, uh, $5,000 on the uh, kids, sorry, you get 66500 on the pool at 10%. You get uh, about $5,000 on the uh, outdoor kitchen for a total of eleven grand uh, versus the pool only, which was $8,000. So it's an additional $3,500 on every pool project. Wow. How smart are you? Make more money for every deal. And we try to make it easy. And we put together these basic packages uh, that says if you sold someone this model right here, which is called the Key West, for example, uh, it's going to be a seven foot cabinet. It's going to have a 32 inch grill. It's going to have some access doors underneath it. It's going to have a refrigerator. And we suggest you sell that for $7,500 to the homeowner. And that is going to get you about 30% gross profit. So about $2,000 on this particular example. Um, and if you, we went ahead and tried to make it even easier, that $7,500 is gonna come with the acrylic exterior on the cabinet, 
and a natural stone tile countertop, like you see here, like you see here. If they wanted to upgrade and do a stone veneer on the face, it's going to add about $1,700 uh, to this particular uh, price. So you take the $7,500 and now it's going to be $8,200 because we're adding the stone veneer. If they wanted to add a solid granite countertop, like you see over here, then it's about $1,000 more than the tile. And these prices, by the way, do include uh, our subcontractors doing the basic installation, which is setting the cabinetry in place, putting the appliances in, uh, doing any minor finishing work. The things that we don't do are we do not do uh, gas, plumbing, or electrical because we're not certified to do any of that. Okay. So that is super, super easy. Anyone can sell an outdoor kitchen and people want them. So why don't you sell them? Because maybe you've never tried. So don't be afraid to try. We have hopefully taken all the pain away. We try to make this as turnkey and as foolproof as possible. Been doing it for quite a long time. Know all the ins and outs. We'll help guide you through it. If you need our assistance on the first couple uh, sales, first couple installations, we're gonna be there for you. So we are at your beck and call. Now we did these packages that we put together to try to make it really, really simple. And if someone says, yeah, I really like a seven foot model, there it is, that's perfect. Uh, I'd like to give you $7,500 when can you deliver it? You should say, great, give me the money. It can be there in about three weeks and you should move on. However, a lot of times people say, well, I want some that's, that's something that's really custom, something that's gonna fit my space exactly. We can do that too. Here's some examples of some spe specific custom fitting situations where this one has to go between some posts and right in between, you know, this is not, this is not very deep. So it had to fit exactly. So, you know, it's a little bit narrower than it would typically be. Here's a really great example of a real typical new home situation where uh, the homeowner purchased a new home uh, from the home builder. Home builder wanted, you know, crazy money, $50,000 or whatever it was to add an outdoor kitchen. The homeowner said, no, thank you, but I will, you know, spend $1,500 for the plumbing package. Um, so you can see that that's what the homeowner did. And they have the stub outs for the sink here. They have a vent here. They have some power. They have a, uh, a gas line, but this is where the uh, sliding door is. And if we put a cabinet right here, because that's where the plumbing is, uh, getting out of the sliding door is not going to be the best. So what can you do? Well, we made this really uh, cool little uh, false wall, basically, just to hide the plumbing. So as soon as the uh, plumbing came in the cabinet, we did a elbow and took it straight down to where the sink was going to go. So they're still able to get out of their door. Um, turned out to be a nice little storage area uh, shelf there as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, so this is a totally custom uh, factory built outdoor kitchen. You can see this is our little false wall. It's also wrapped around a post. This is also a retractable screen. So it has to have the right clearance for the screen to go down. This particular one has a farmhouse sink. So pretty cool, right? Right. And when it is a custom uh, piece like that, you can provide us a uh, 3D drawing, you know, from Pool Studio or Octal Napkin Sketch like this one. And we are gonna do a drawing and send it back to you. This is what we want to have your consumer sign off on. And once that sign off is completed, then it takes about three weeks for production and delivery and you get your money and everybody's happy. We even have a quoting tool on our website um, and it's an all drop down menu. So you kind of just enter the quantity of the cabinetry and in, in a linear fee and you tell it what grills and what appliances you want. And then it'll do a grand total for you at the bottom and showing you what you should sell that to the homeowner for. And again, of course, myself or any of the homeowner uh, sales team can help walk you through that uh, quoting tool as well. So that's one thing you can do, right? Sell outdoor kitchens. What's something else you could 
cell that could be installed by somebody else. Well, how about patio shade structures? You sell it, we provide it, we deliver it, we have subcontractors uh, available to do installation. We even have some marketing materials already done for you. Over on the left is a marketing template that you just insert your logo and your telephone number here and spread the word that you want to sell people outdoor uh, patio structures. In your case, uh, if you're already selling pools uh, and you're already in your backyard, maybe this marketing piece isn't that, uh, isn't that big of an advantage for you. But if you're out there trying to drum up new business, this is pretty cool. So Renaissance. Renaissance Patio uh, was, was founded about 10 years ago by a guy in the home improvement industry who was uh, a patio screen guy, basically, and was building uh, patio shade structures on site out of standard aluminum you know, screen rooms. So any of your screen contractors can certainly build one of these. A lot of them don't want to do it because they're so busy doing other, you know, doing what they do. And a lot of times when it's built on site, it's not really designed and thought out. So this is actually a program where they came up with some engineering and some set pieces and some structure to it. So quality is really, really superior. And I'm just going to walk you through the line. Uh, there are different uh, models based on basically the style and the roofing structure. And, you know, they, they range in price from based on how much material is involved. So this is called the Moderno, and it's a very, very basic structure. It is an elite style roof, meaning it's insulated roof panel. It doesn't have any trusses going back to the house. Um, so it's very, very basic. All these structures are available as a freestanding unit, as you can see here, or an attached unit. You also can add screen enclosure to it if you like. So this is the Moderno. It's going to be the least expensive model. The next step up from that is called a Contempo. The Contempo looks very similar, but now we're just adding some uh, truss, some, some decorative trusses at the end or the outside. So it's going to cost a little bit more because it has these little decorative features. Again, you can do it as a freestanding unit or attached to house structure. It's also available with a curved truss or straight truss. So curved trusses cost a little bit more than a straight, not a lot, but a little bit more. This is the next step up, which is the most expensive one they offer. It's called the Classico, uh, designed to look like a wooden structure. The Classico has trusses that run all the way back to the post structure or you know, from post to post. So this is gonna be the most expensive because it has the most material involved. Let me point out something else to you as well. This particular one has what they call two um, fan uh, beams in it. And a fan beam really isn't a beam exactly. It's just where they run a, a conduit or a opening through the insulated roof panel. So you can install, so you can run your wiring and such to power a fan or a light. You could also install the fan right on the actual truss itself because they're hollow. So you could run your wiring through the truss if you wanted to. So they have to give you a couple options. And this one is my favorite one. It's called the Classico. I think it's my favorite just because it's kind of unique. The Classico um, has a clear polycarbonate roof panel. So it lets 70% of the light raise the light through but it, it, it prevents UVA, UVC rays from coming through. So it keeps it about 30% cooler underneath there. So the benefit is it's still light underneath your shade structure, um, light as far as the, you know, the, the sunlight coming through, but it keeps heat and rain out. So I think that's pretty cool. Also available as a freestanding unit or a attached unit. And then the last one is called the Aria. Uh, the shade trellis. So this is more of the traditional pergola style uh, patio structure. Again, available as a freestanding or an attached unit. Uh, one thing I will point out, and when they when we measure these uh, units or when we price these units, the pricing is done and the sizing is done post to post. So for example, if this this is probably um, let's see if we can find a different example. 
Let's go back. Eh, maybe we can. We'll just pretend like this, this one. So let's pretend like this is from the house to this post is 10 feet. And from this post to that post is 30 feet. So this would be a 10 by 30 as far as the sizing and the pricing goes. But the actuality is it's really 11 because there's a 12 inch overhang on the front and there's a 12 inch overhang on each end. So the roof size is gonna be 11 by 32, but the actual quoting size and the size for pricing is 10 because it's from house to post is 10 plus from post to post is 30. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure I'll get questions about it and we'll answer them. So why Renaissance? It's a real product. It's designed and engineered as a system. It's uh, engineered by location based on uh, weather service data for wind speed and snow load, which obviously doesn't matter uh, to us in Florida, but you know they actually take uh, historical data to gather calculations for wind speed and they engineer and build them based on that. So uh, a installation uh, in uh, right on the ocean uh, might uh, the actual project around right the ocean might cost a few dollars more than one inland based on how much uh, extra support it needs based on the wind speed. So they also provide engineered plans. Um, and if you need your local engineer to stamp them, then all it's got to do is stamp them. Uh, manufactured in Florida by Lansing Building Products, designed for Florida weather. And just as a comparison, um, on the left is the Renaissance material, which is 0 0.060 thickness versus what typically is done, which is called a roll formed standard aluminum, which is 0 0.024. So you can see quite a bit thicker, quite a bit stronger. Um, so aluminum is twice uh, as thick. Uh, they uh, can either be four inch post or six by six inch post, depending on location and how what's required. Um, so that's all done when they when we do the engineering and those calculations. Uh, some really nice fasteners and hardware. This is a cross section of the elite style roof, which is your insulated roof. Um, has gutter system on three sides of it uh, that are integrated, comes with the downspouts. It's compliant with Miami-Dade re re requirements and it's pretty easy to price out. We have what, over on the left, we have what we call a cheat sheet, um, which gets you in the ballpark. And then, um, but as I said, each job is priced out based on location and real weather data. So once you uh, tell me uh, or your sales rep, uh, what the location is and what size and which model, uh, you know, give us some specifics about the installation, then we are gonna do a customized quote just for you. So over on the left here, um, let's just take a look at one of these examples. If we were doing a 10 foot by 10 foot Moderna, which is the least expensive model, um, the dealer costs suggested to you, well, they're not suggested, the dealer cost you would pay is about $2,300, okay? Um, but then if it was you know, a bigger unit and we know the address and we know all the information about it, then we're gonna do a specific quote based on location and they're gonna take into account all those weather information, weather information and wind speed information is really the most important thing, okay? And then last but not least, I think I wanted to talk about some cool new things that we've just starting, started working on, which is provided to us by a company called Parte Outdoor Surfaces. And they do uh, siding, decking, artificial turf, and porcelain pavers. I don't know about you guys, but I have seen, I don't know, three or four houses in my neighborhood that are now installing artificial turf in the backyard. And, you know, who, who would have thunk, right? But it seems like it's certainly gaining in popularity. So why don't you take advantage of the gaining in popularity and offer it as part of your services? So this company um, is called Parquet, as I say, uh, and there's many advantages to artificial turf. I'm not going to read them to you. You guys can probably figure them out. You don't have to mow the grass anymore. That's a pretty big advantage. Uh, no need for sprinkling. 
uh, not a whole lot of maintenance. Um, the grass doesn't die. So, I mean, you know, there you go. Uh, the benefit to this particular company, in our opinion, is that there's very, it's a very easy, um, very, very easy to get into. Uh, the material comes in a 15 foot roll and it's, uh, so, and it's a hundred feet long, but you only have to buy 10 feet at a time. So you don't have to buy the whole roll. Um, and that can be pretty, you know, pretty big. So there's a whole lot less waste. I mean, if you're a, you know, you're a huge consumer and doing tons and tons of jobs of artificial turf, buying a roll at a time probably is no big deal to you. But if you're kind of new into the game uh, and you had to buy the whole roll, it might be kind of cost prohibitive. So this is kind of a cool thing. Uh, very small minimum purchase of 150 square feet. Um, they also have all the installation materials. And they are also going to be providing us with installation contractors that can, you know, facilitate that part of it. So basically, you would be selling the project um, based on the pricing we would give you and based on an estimated installation cost. And that would be that. That would be how that would work. So the uh, rough pricing for the dealer is about three dollars a square foot for the material, and the labor is about the same. So um, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And this is a, a note from the, the vendor that says over the last two years, their average order was about $5,600 at cost, which means those projects are, you know, in the 10 to $12,000 range. And most of their contractors uh, are their customers are making between 25 and 30% margins. So it's pretty, pretty nice profit. Here's some pictures of their material in action. Everyone knows what artificial turf looks like. Obviously, it's come a long way from, you know, when it started, uh, I think, in the 80s or maybe even the 70s. Uh, it looks a lot more realistic now and natural. They also have these, which I think are super, super cool. These are resin decking tops. So the idea is that you take a existing lanai, like over on the left there, which is uh, you know, has either just concrete or maybe acrylic mixture on it, and you jazz it up. Uh, you put these composite decking tiles down on it, and it looks like over there on the right-hand side. There's another example down at the bottom. Looks like this may be somebody's showroom, but the idea is that you can really jazz it up. So let's go back to this slide. And uh, they're designed to be used right out of the box. There's no insulation tools required. They basically snap together. Um, if you kind of see these little tabs on the edges here, uh, kind of like a male female type of system where they just kind of snap together. They have lots of different sizes available. They have all the trims and reducer pieces available. Uh, it's less expensive than traditional wooden deck. And tiles are very, very low maintenance compared to the wooden deck. You don't have to retreat them because it's a composite material. And they're about $3 a square foot too ish. So there's your befores and afters. And here's one more thing that's pretty cool. Uh, the same type of material, a composite material, uh, or epoxy, resin material, um, but now used in a vertical application. So on the side of a house, or more exciting to me, is as a roof or ceiling, I should say, on an outdoor lanai patio. I think that's super, super cool. You see that uh, these uh, boards are held together with a little clip system. Go back to this one, you can kind of see the aluminum clip. So you install the clip and then the pieces of material, you know, snap into the little clips that keeps it uh, properly spaced and gives it some uh, uh, expansion and contraction room. And these are about $3 and 50-ish cents a linear foot, just as a, a general guideline. So, uh, you can also use them on outdoor kitchen cabinetry. Looks nice. Here's some other additional applications. There's one with an outdoor kitchen that they went up and down versus horizontally. And also porcelain pavers. Now our uh, partners at Stone Hardscapes uh, are now importing porcelain pavers. And that's the hottest new trend in outdoor pavers. Uh, these are very large formats, uh, 12 by 12s. Well, I'm sorry, they're 12 by 24, 24 by 24, and even 24 by 48. That's two feet by four feet. That's a big paver. 
Uh, benefits to porcelain pavers are they're very consistent color because it's a man-made product versus a natural stone. So, you know, we have some customers who don't understand the beauty and benefit of natural stone. They're looking for something more consistent. Well, this would be up their alley. Uh, these are two centimeters thick. So that is about three quarters of an inch for all of us, uh, you know, USA kind of people. We don't know anything about the metrics, but we know that's about three quarters of a centimeter. Sorry, three quarters of an inch. Uh, they are recommended to be mud set, meaning there should be a concrete foundation. Uh, so you pour a concrete deck and then you put these pavers on top of it. So that is a downside because it does increase the cost of, of the project and insulation. Material cost is very, very similar to natural stone, but because it's a new product and it has a higher perceived value, you can certainly sell it for a lot more than you're currently selling a natural stone deck for. And when you sell it for more and it costs about the same, uh, that's better for you, right? Better profit margin. So who's ready to sell outdoor living? Everybody, right? think so. All right. Well, I think I'm I'm good if everybody else is good. Appreciate you guys uh, spending your lunch hour with me. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye.